Hello, the faces. Put it off. <laughs> I wanted Arabic. I confess. Good evening, everybody. My name is uh, Faris Al Hajri. I'm from uh, the Sultanate of Oman, or Oman simply. Oman is uh, located in the Arabian Peninsula and is considered the guardian of Arabian Peninsula because we are on the side of the Indian Ocean facing Pakistan and India. So Oman is on the, I mean, uh, many of you are on Oman. We have the border with Saudi Arabia and Kuwait, I mean, uh, uh, United Arab Emirates. Uh, many of you know about Dubai just four hours drive from Muscat, so I'm from Muscat. I actually, uh, my parents-in-law, they live in California. So we came here in the United States for many times and we enjoy, we love this place. But when we came to Blacks for the first time, because my son, Kais from VTEC, uh, he was sent by the government scholarship. We love the place. People are so nice, amazing. I never seen in the United States place like this. Very friendly, uh, hospitable. So we decided to be here for the meantime to also to share this uh, scientific discovery. I call it scientific discovery because it is a personal scientific discovery. Until now, we're trying to get a recognition through uh, doing lab tests, certification, all these things. So it's still a quite a long way to go. But we've done quite some good uh, job. And when I did my thesis in uh, alternative medicine in India, but actually by profession, I am engineer, quantity surveyor. And I work in the government. I'm actually 54 years old. And I work in the government for 25, 23 years. And where it ended with my post in the Office of Undersecretary of Housing. But it shifted 180 degrees, you imagine. But that was something from the subconscious, a weighted dream from childhood, where actually in brief was an emotional impact by my mother who was undergoing surgery. I was born in Africa and that time I used to look in the stars. I have two dreams. The first dream, when I grow old, every child has a dream. When I grow old, my wish is to find a treatment for my mother with no side effect because she has to undergo surgery every two to three years. You can imagine for 35 years, she had 10 surgeries in her stomach where it ended with the ovarian cancer. She had to be sent in the United Kingdom for three times for chemotherapy, but that was the only way to prolong her life. But from that time, we were separated from the family. And the problem is that when you are separated, the reason they wanted to reduce the load from the family. But for us, it is a painful shock. So I used to say, why we can't live with our mother? But that's the reason. So looking for answer 10, I said, my wish when I grow old to heal my mother with something with now side effect that can secure. As a child, I believe there is a solution and heal the world. Secondly, because we have many Chinese in Africa, so I used to like the yellow skin, but I only knew in, China, in, uh, in Asia two countries. I never knew other countries. I knew about Japan and China. So I like the big eyes. And I used to say my wish is when I grow old to marry Japanese. And I ended up marrying a Filipina. It was Gloria from Philippines, and we are 20 years married. And from there, being a nurse, everything I believe doesn't happen by itself. We are driven by a universal divine power. We don't know what's that. We can't define that. But thank you. Yeah, frequency. Yeah, exactly. That power, it started even from the womb of our mother, how it happened. We'll explain why how, water. So we, when I was driving that subconscious looking for answer ten, when my mother, she passed away, I remember that time I wanted to take a suicide to be uh, buried with her. But I said, oh, I'm going to go to hell if I take suicide. You know, <laughs> kind of confusion, all this mess up. But, but I, the problem is I had a shock inferiority complex. I can't stand in front of people and talking. And if somebody smiled because my teeth don't you know, uh, fit together. So I say, they laugh, smile, they laugh at me. I have a real chronic inferiority complex. I can't meet people, but I turn paper to be my best friend because paper, they don't laugh at me. And my boss is so happy. So I started to be workaholic, productive. 
but it's a divine power. It's a kind of a universal power that drives you to do something because no pain, no gain. When I went into that pain because being workaholic, my job as a quantity surveyor, doing the tender analysis report, what is this, all this. But the problem was being workaholic, my boss is so happy, being promoted year after year, but the problem, be, uh, not giving my body chance to do, I mean, the, what it deserve. Sometimes I reach to work 23 hours, non-stop, no food, nothing in take, because my boss said, you have to finish this job but tomorrow, and you can be the one to finish. But it resulted to overload my body, then I started to have allergy rhinitis, and I didn't know why. And I started to have that kind of phobia, I don't want to get sick. I didn't know that, but because I'm so inclined to read a lot about health, then I found one of the articles about amnio, uh, uh, um, uh, the, 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 the powder from the photocopier machine, which is, a, yeah, big pardon? Ammonia. ammonia, thank you. The ammonia causing allergy. I didn't know because our engineering work, we print about 10,000 for tendering, all these things. And our computers just link very close. We don't have a network at that time. So we have to use a cable connected. So it's just somewhere nearby. When I feel that like chill in my nose, when I go to the hospital, the problem is that they do not diagnose the cause of that allergy. They give me is to solve the symptom. Yes, it help. It relieve myself. But it keep my immune system weaker because my body rejects these chemicals, secondly because it doesn't solve the cause. So